now let us discuss about ivo structure in operating system ivo structure concept comes under computer system organization we have three concepts in computer system organization the first one is computer system operations there we have seen this diagram so i will explain uh, once again the diagram in this concept also uh, so if you want full knowledge about the diagram just refer my previous video computer system operation so uh, that that is the first approach the first concept in computer system organization computer system operation second concept is storage structure and the third one is ivo structure generally every computer is a combination of cpu driver controllers and memory which are connected through the common bus here every device will have a driver controller here we have disk hard disk so hard disk has hard disk has disk controller here this driver controller is nothing but disk controller for the hard disk likewise for every input output device we have that device controller so here if you take uh, this has the disk controller why because here we have our hard disk disk controller is in charge of hard disk disk controller has local buffer which can stores the data here the data which is in the hard disk will be transferred to the local buffer of the disk controller likewise the data of local buffer which resides in disk controller will be transferred to the hard disk why because we know the advantage of the cpu cpu will executes the program but cpu can executes a program only when the program resides in main memory but whenever we save the program that program will be stored in hard disk so initially the program will be in hard disk so here the disk controller will transfers the data from hard disk into the local buffer and then what will happen is whenever the data is available whenever the data is available then disk controller will sends an interrupt signal to the cpu whenever cpu receives the interrupt signal then cpu stops execution of the currently running program and the cpu control will goes to the interrupt service routine program here interrupt service routine program means cpu simply transfers the data from local buffer to the memory so now the data resides in me memory so cpu can execute the program so here the point is whenever the low whenever whenever the device controller has some data then it will sends an interrupt signal to the cpu so cpu stops execution of the currently running program and cpu control will be shifted to the interrupt service routine program so once the interrupt service routine program is executed then cpu control will be shifted to the original program remaining instructions in that program will be executed so this concept is called as interrupt initiated ivo so this concept was already discussed in our previous video that is computer system operation if you have any doubt then please refer that video so here the problem with interrupt initiated ivo is if you want to transfer small amount of data then interrupt initiated ivo is the suitable method but if you want to transfer large amount of data like if you want to transfer some disk ivo disk ivo means we know that hard disk contains programs let hard disk contains large program so now we have to transfer that program from that hard disk into the memory so in that occasion interrupt initiated ivo is not suitable why because interrupt initiated ivo transfers the data byte by byte so whenever here we have one byte of data then device controller will sends interrupt signal to the cpu so cpu stops its work 
and CPU transfers that one byte to the memory and then CPU does its own work and once again if disk controller has one more byte then it will send interrupt signal to the CPU. So CPU stops its work and it will transfer another one byte from disk controller to the memory. So this is very very worst approach if you want to transfer large piece of data. So in order to overcome the, this problem we use DMA. So first let's see this diagram. So here this is memory. Here we have three components. This is nothing but uh, a, a computer diagram only. Here we have three components. The first component is memory. This is memory. Memory contains programs. We know that program is a collection of instructions and each instruction may contain some data. Let me have a statement like int a equal to 10. So a contains some data. Let me have an array. Let array contains 5 values 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So he, that is nothing but data. So th this is main memory. And this is nothing but CPU. This component is nothing but CPU. Here we have catch memory. Catch memory. And thread of execution. We know that uh, CPU executes the programs instruction by instruction. Here CPU fetches an instruction from the main memory and it will execute the instruction. So this is nothing but instruction execution cycle. So CPU fetches an instruction from the memory and it will execute that instruction. Likewise instruction by instruction will be executed and data will also be moved. So CPU wants the data, A value data in order to execute that one. So the data can also be moved. So this is nothing but CPU. So this is nothing but thread of execution. So here each CPU executes any task thread by thread. We know what is a thread. Thread means a small unit of execution. So CPU executes that program thread by thread. Next here we have device. So this device may be any device. It may be input device or output device or hard disk. It may be any device. So here, here the CPU is executing the program. While executing the program, it, it, it finds an I.O. request. Like uh, we use a scanner function in C language. We use a printer function in C language. Those are nothing but some I.O. statements. So whenever CPU finds an I.O. statement, then it sends an I.O. request. It sends, this is nothing but I.O. request. CPU sends I.O. Re request signal to the device. Then the device has to read the data. Let, let it be the disk request. So now the device has to read the data from disk and the data will be stored in local buffer of the disk controller. So let us assume that now the data is available at the local buffer of the corresponding device. So once the data is available, this approach is nothing but interrupt initiated I.O. This approach is nothing but interrupt initiated I.O. This whole diagram, this part is nothing but interrupt initiated I.O. Already we have seen interrupt initiated I.O. So once the data is available at the device, then the device will sense an interrupt. This is nothing but interrupt signal. The device will sense interrupt signal to the CPU. Now CPU has to transfer the data from device into the main memory. So CPU will transfer. Yeah, this is nothing but data. So data will be, uh, uh, for data we have arrow towards the device as well as arrow towards the CPU. Why? Because here whenever the data is available, then what the CPU will do? CPU will transfer the data from device to the main memory. So that's why arrow will be towards the CPU. But once that program execution is over, then we know that main memory contains only the data that is needed by CPU. So CPU executed that program, the data. So once again, the data has to be transferred to the hard disk. So once again, CPU transfers the data from that main memory into the hard disk. So that's why arrow will be towards CPU as well as device. Where he is coming to the I.O. request, yeah, arrow will be towards the device. Coming to the interrupt, arrow will be towards the CPU. But here, what is the problem here? What is the problem? The problem is this approach interrupt initiated I.O. This approach is suitable when we want to transfer small piece of information. If you want to transfer large amount of data, 
then this approach is not suitable. So let's see this one. Here CPU is executing the program. It finds an IO request. So CPU sends IO request to the device. So once once the device has the data, then it will sends an interrupt signal to the CPU. Now CPU will transfers the data from device to the main memory. And after execution, the data from main memory will be transferred to the device. This is about interrupt initiated IO. So this approach is suitable only for small piece of data transferring. If we want to transfer large piece of information, then we use as DMA. We know that DMA stands for Direct Memory Access. Here the responsibility of the DMA is it transfers the data from that device controller to the main memory without CPU intervention. Here the task of CPU is in interrupt initiated IO. What is the task of CPU? It has to execute the program as well as it has to transfer the data from device to the main memory. But now we are eliminating CPU intervention. CPU will focus only on executing the program. Whereas DMA transfers the data from this device to the main memory without CPU intervention. So, so CPU will focus only on its work, only the program execution. The DMA solely responsible for uh, transferring the data from device controller to the main memory. It has no other work. So it only transfers the data. DMA is a high speed device. So by using DMA we can transfer bulky amount of data from the device controller to the main memory. So this is about IO structure. IO structure means the name itself specifies the meaning IO. So how the data will be transferred from IO devices to the main memory.